So very good afternoon everyone. I am Ishan and I am going to be speaking on the topic of transformation in marketing via automation and internet of things. So before I begin, let me just quickly touch upon this uh, interesting concept of marketing or the interesting definition of marketing. So one of the key things is that marketing is something that all of us feel that we relate to. You know, when you talk about technical concepts like finance, law, strategy, maybe rocket science, we all are somehow not comfortable with it, but we talk about marketing. That is something we all have grown up with, whether it's a television ad, or let's say it's, it's uh, something which is like a pamphlet that is given to us, or let's say it is something like uh, an SMS that is uh, given, uh, you know, and pushed to us. Marketing is something we all have grown up with. Now the question is that how do we define marketing? So typically, marketing is the provision of value via a set of offerings. So the offerings could be anything. It could be a product, a service, an idea, an information point, or anything that can offer a value to all the associated set of stakeholders. Be it uh, you know, the company and its employees, be it uh, you know, the shareholders, the investors, the channel partners, and more often than not, the most important point, which is the end consumer. So now the question is that, or rather there are two things that are very important for uh, the marketing definition. The first one is that it is universal, which means the definition of marketing stays constant or same across different places. The second thing is that it is timeless, which means that the definition of marketing has strayed true to its character over the last few years. However, if you look at the way the marketers have approached marketing, it is very different from what it is now and what it was 20 years back. And more importantly, the definition or the way in which marketing is done is going to be very different over the next few years. So now the question is that if the definition remains the same, then why is it that the approach has changed so much? So before I answer that question, let me first look at the seven questions that any marketer has to answer to ensure that they are doing a fine job. The first one is what or what is the offering that I as a marketer am providing to my DG or target group. The second question is why or what is the reason I am providing this offering to my DG. So interestingly, the answer to these first two questions provides a very key insight to all the marketers which is known as the product market fit. Or in other words, it sometimes tells the marketers that why is the value proposition that they have so relevant to the target audience in terms of solving their need gap or the problem statement. Well, there are other questions to answer as well. So the third one is where or what is the location of my TG when I'm reaching out to them? The fourth question is when or what is the time of the day when I'm reaching out to the TG? The fifth question is how or via which communication channel, whether it's a TV ad, whether it's a radio ad, a pamphlet, a holding, an SMS, via which channel am I reaching out to my DG? The sixth question is how much or what is the quantum of my offering via which I am reaching out to the DG? And finally, the seventh question is by whom or who is the individual who is reaching out, whether it's a celebrity brand ambassador, whether it's a brand influencer who is using my product in and out, or whether it's, uh, let's say, a mascot or somebody who is among, among the people who are using the products. So well, now as I move on, let me quickly touch upon the uh, question that I left unanswered some time back, which is why even though the definition of marketing has remained timeless, why has the approach changed so much? So the answer to that question is that the way in which these seven questions have been answered by marketers over the years have changed drastically and is bound to change even more. How? Well, let's look at it one by one. So first, let me talk about the past. So all of you guys know mathematical equations, right? You must have studied it sometime. So there are two parts to a mathematical equation or two entities. One is a constant whose value remains fixed over a period of time. And second is a variable which assumes different values or which can assume different values. So the biggest challenge for marketers in the past has been that the answer to all these seven questions has been fixed or constant for all the people to whom their marketing effort has reached out. So let me take an example for the sake of simplicity. So let's say uh, there's an 8 p.m. television ad of a shaving cream that is targeted to an adult male. So let's answer these questions one by one. The first question is what? So let's assume that out of 100 people who have or who watch television, there are 50 percent people who are male and 50 percent people who are female. Now I can automatically eliminate the latter half and I'm left with 50 people. And well, that's not all. Out of these 50 people, let's say there are 20 people who are below the age of 16 
or who haven't yet reached the age when this particular offering makes sense to them. Which leaves me with 30 individuals and mind you, I have just answered one question. The second question, which is why? So well, it's a personal grooming product, the functional value proposition is to get rid of the facial hair. So let's say out of these remaining 30 people, there are five people who well, do not have a facial hair. So we are left with 25 people. Out of these 25 people, let's say there are five people who do not shave, you know, who believe in maintaining a beard, well, it's a fashion these days as well as what I'm told. So when we are left with 20 people now to whom this offering might make sense. And let's say out of these 20 people, there are five people who use a trimming machine or a trimmer while they are shaving or while they are getting, you know, like grooming themselves, which leaves us with 15 individuals and five more questions to answer. The third question, which is where? So let's say out of these 15 people, there are three people who belong to tier three, tier four cities or smart villages where well, they have the television access, but the distribution channel of the product does not support the sale or in other words, they do not have an access either offline or not online to purchase this particular product. Which means we are left with 12 people and still four more questions to answer. The fourth question which is when or what time. So let's say out of these 12 people we are left with, there are four people who do not watch television at 8 p.m. or who are watching television but some other channel at 8 p.m. So even though as a marketer I'm reaching out to their television box, I'm not able to make the final cut because I'm there at the wrong time for those four individuals. Which leaves me with eight individuals and three more questions to answer. The fifth question which is how or what channel am I using? So let's say out of these eight people, there are three people who do not take television ads seriously. Or let's say they do not watch or they never base their purchase decision based on a television ad that they saw. Which leaves us with five individuals and two questions to answer. The sixth is how much? So let's say we have an offer where if they purchase a 400 gram SKU or a 400 gram entity of that shaving cream, they get 20% extra or let's say they get a raise of blade free. Now what if out of these five people, there are three people who do not go for major or macro SKUs or rather they only purchase small items, let's say 150 grams products. So even though the offering makes sense to them, the offer does not. Which leaves me with two people and one last question to answer which is by whom. So let's say it's being endorsed by a famous cricketer like Virat Kohli. So how many Virat Kohli fans in the house? Okay, quite a few, right? So let's say out of these two people, one of them is a person who did not raise the hand when I asked this question. Or in other words, one of these people do not relate to the brand ambassador or does not relate to the brand ambassador, which leaves me with one single individual. Now let me tell you what just happened. As a marketer, when I started off, we had a target audience of 100 people to whom this communication was supposed to reach. But when I funneled and filtered my entire audience based on answering these seven questions, I'm left with only one individual to whom this entire communication is relevant. So what went wrong? Does, the, uh, does this channel not have the reach? The answer is no, it does have the reach. But is the reach effective enough? The answer is no for the simple reason that I could not personalize the answer for all these seven questions. I had fixed them, I had made them constant for all the people to whom I reached out to. So if I have to just take an hypothetical example from the animal kingdom, it's like you know offering a 50% discount on swimming to all the animals or all the species. We clearly know for whom it makes sense, right? So now moving on to the present or how things have changed. So currently what we have is a data driven approach wherein based on certain empirical data points we are able to answer these questions for the relevant audience in a more personalized way. How? Well let's figure out one by one. So just for the sake of example let's consider a student credit platform which is uh, relevant to college students. So interestingly that's the industry where I belong as well. So the first question which is what? So let's say my empirical data tells me that the students in Delhi go for cash credit or you know they go for an offering where they get the cash from us and pay us back later versus let's say the students in Mumbai go for e-commerce credit which means what? Which means that they take, they exactly know what they are purchasing at the time of availing the credit and it's an asset backed credit. So now what do I do as a marketer? It's very simple. So I ensure that whatever proactive communication goes to the Delhi students whether it's an SMS, an email, a WhatsApp or a social media ad 
it is relevant or the communication is in and around cash credit versus it is around e-com e-commerce credit for the Mumbai audience or in other words let's say I reach out to the male audience with respect to the smartphone credit because that maybe makes more sense versus a Mintra gift card for the female audience again based on the data and I automate all these flows I don't do it manually the second question which is why so now let's zero in on one audience which is let's say the Delhi audience or the Delhi Janta now let's say a first year student who spends cash does it on books a second year student spends cash on let's say the co-curricular activities the third year student spends it on let's say a GMAT or a GRE course and the fourth year student does it on travel because well it's the final year so when I design my communication to each of these individual audiences I use the specific use cases that are more relevant to them so even though the what or the product offering remains the same the reason or the why varies and it makes it it makes the entire communication more personalized the third is where so let's say I use this concept of geotagging or geofencing where we choose certain coordinates the latitudes and longitudes where the college audience sits and studies and we ensure that all our ads pop up only for these particular coordinates so not indiscriminately showing my ads to everybody I ensure that people only in a specific geography are able to view my ads to make it even more relevant the fourth question is when so let me take an example let's say there are two individuals individual A and individual B so individual A when I send an SMS to them I send three SMS's rather I figure out that they read all the SMS's or they click on that link from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. versus individual B who does it let's say from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. now what do I do with this data well it's very intuitive the fourth SMS that I send out to individual A is going to be around 8 to 9 p.m. versus to individual B it's going to be around 5 to 6 p.m. because I know that is the time when it's going to convert or the chances are higher the fifth question which is how or which channel to use so let's again take these two individuals so let's say individual A is more responsive to SMS versus individual B who is more responsive to email now what do I do well again it's very simple next time I reach out to individual A I'm not going to reach out via all channels I'm going to focus mostly on SMS because that is the channel that works there versus email for individual B the sixth question which is how much so in the credit industry there is this concept called credit limit or how much of credit can you avail from us so let's say there is a student who has a 40,000 credit limit now what do we do we ensure that we reach out to them via all the SKUs that are around 40,000 credit let's say an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 6 or one plus 5 with a certain amount of down payment versus individual B who has an uh, let's say a credit limit of 10,000 only so we reach out to them via more inexpensive SKUs and finally by who so let's say there are three individuals from the same class from the same batch of the respective person to whom we are trying to reach out so now we ensure that when we reach out to the fourth individual we take the reference of these three provided we have their permission because that strands for a much stronger advocation than any unknown celebrity whom the fourth individual might not know of so typically what we did over here was we used a data driven approach where certain static data points helped us make our offering much more relevant and personalized so if I have to take an example from the animal kingdom it's like marketing an aquarium to a fish versus marketing the ocean to the whale which brings me to the final portion of my uh, uh, talk which is what's going to happen in the future so if you look at the present what we did was we followed this empirical data driven approach but the challenge with that is that let's say me as a consumer provides certain data to an entity 12 months back now over the next 12 months me as an individual or I as an individual am going to evolve however the data remains static so what if we could make this entire game more dynamic and ensure that all the marketing efforts that we are doing are more real time depending on not just the data but also my behavioral aspects also the activities that I am performing day in and day out so let me take some examples so let's say I'm driving a car I'm driving a car and the sensors figure out that the petrol is less than 10% in the petrol tank now it figures out or it sends that signal to my phone my smartphone and my smartphone the GPS and that figures out that there is a petrol bunk or a petrol pump in 500 meters radius so this is what internet of things is right so now what what happens I get a notification on my phone 
that hey Ishan, you know what? Your the petrol in your car is less than 10% of the overall threshold, meaning what you need to fill your petrol, and there is a petrol pump XYZ within 500 meters. So why don't you just go there and get your petrol refilled? So imagine how powerful that message is. It's not it's not just answering the what and the why, but it's also giving me the exact communication at the point of sale. Let's answer the next couple of questions, which is when and how. So let's say I have been very active on my smartphone from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. for this particular week. So if this data can be provided by my discretion to, the, let's say, any marketer who's trying to reach out, they can probably use this to ensure that I am pitched a certain offering within this time interval because the chances of conversion are higher. Versus, let's say, I might change my timings. The next month or the next week, I might change my schedule. So I might be pitched ads accordingly or the communication accordingly. The fifth question, which is how. So again, let's say within this time slot, I am more active on WhatsApp today versus I am more active on Gmail or my email tomorrow. So the communication for me might make more sense on WhatsApp today and on email tomorrow. The sixth question, which is how much. So let's say there's a washing machine. There's a washing machine with a cartridge that is pre-filled. Now, as soon as the detergent goes below a certain threshold, based on certain intelligence about what SKU I ordered last time, it sends, you know, the sensor sends a communication to the phone and it automatically orders the detergent SKU that I'm looking for. So it's not just ordering at the right time, but it's also ordering the right amount of SKU. And finally, by whom? So it's a very interesting use case. So all of you guys know the smart glasses, the Google Glass, right? an example of a smart glass. So let's say I'm wearing a Google glass and I'm walking. I'm just walking and I view this big Amir Khan holding for five straight seconds. So what am I telling Google? I'm telling that any holding or any visual piece with Amir Khan has the chances of holding my attention span longer than anything else, which means any communication in and around a brand ambassador or with a brand ambassador as Amir Khan makes more sense for me. So when, what happened over here is that we did not just use the data-driven approach, but we also superimposed on top of it behavioral aspects and actions that an individual can take. And based on that, the marketers were able to reach out. So if I have to take an example from, uh, again, the animal kingdom, you'll figure out that it's like, you know, pitching uh, a banana to a monkey when he's hungry, uh, uh, you know, a, a, like a tree to the monkey when it's uh, energetic and a shelter to the monkey when he's sleepy. So well, that brings me to the end of my talk and the question over here is that when I talk about all this, does it make the traditional marketing communication channels obsolete, whether it's the television or the radio or the print ads, are we going to lose out on them in the near future? Well, the answer is no, because each and every communication channel has a certain uh, specific, uh, you know, specific use case. However, what's going to happen is that marketers are going to have a lot of flexibility around themselves as to when to use the channel, for whom to use the channel, and how to use them. As for me, well, as a marketer, I'm really excited for, and I'm looking forward to the th things in the future. But more importantly, as a consumer, I cannot wait when I'll be holding a smart device like this in my hand with a certain requirement, and the device is going to exactly predict what am I, what is my requirement, and how it can suggest the most accurate thing for me. Thank you so much.